Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a Reactor live stream session or, um, you know, good morning or good afternoon to wherever you're tuning in from today. Um, my name is Nadia. I work for the Reactor here in Sydney. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, this session will be recorded today and uploaded on our YouTube channel. I'll share our YouTube link in our Q&A and I'll also pop the recording into the actual event page when we are all uploaded. Um, if you do have any questions today, feel free to pop it in the Q&A box for Ashish and he'll be able to answer them for you. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Ashish. Thank you. Thanks, Nadia. Um, and again, welcome everyone from whichever part of the world you are. So good afternoon, good morning and uh, yeah, good evening. Uh, so let's start talking about uh, today's session, which is about building enriched dashboards in Office 365 using three options that we'll look today is graph, activity, API, and Power BI. So these are three options that we can build some dashboards and activities and audit reports uh, from Office 365. Cool. Uh, so before that, let a little bit about me. I am Ashish Padi. I've been in the industry for about 15, oh, actually the number needs to update 15 plus years. I'm an architect, a developer. I work on multiple technologies and Microsoft 365, Azure and AI being the main of them. I love to explore stuff, uh, build things, integrate things, hybrid solutions and all those things. Uh, uh, the cool stuff that people try to stay away from, I try to do it. Uh, but you know, that gives me a, like a lot of interest and passion to all working towards that. Uh, a quick thing on the motor that I generally work on is do it, build it, and build it. So I suppose uh, if you guys think about doing something, uh, you need to start building it. If just streaming it will not be enough. Cool. So let's start with the main topic to our discussion. What's the need of analytics? Why would I need that? What is the need of getting any analytics platform for you guys? So the main things, this is what we normally imagine a business to be like or business in the sense like any kind of adoption, a tool that we bring into our business, any kind of uh, approach that we are planning with our team or as a product. We want always our curve to be up. Well, there is always a little bit of a downward, but most of the time we want to go up. But to go there, the main thing to know is how are we going to grow? What is growth for our team? How are we going to grow in what we are trying to do? In Office 365 sense, the most common question is how it is going to be adopted with most of my organization? How are they going to use it more effectively? And also at the same time, you need to know what people are doing in their environment. How are you going to make sure what they are doing is not compromising what you already have? So you need to understand growth, but also know what is needed for that. You need to know how to manage and control and govern and all those stuff, which normally, you know, People think that is part of IT, but as a business in general, you need to all start understanding or you need to start thinking about how am I going to get best of what I have? So this is generally how the thing meets and analytics helps you get to that point and understand what is going on, how people are behaving, how people are using, how, I, how am I going to tweak them to make it better, but also not compromising the efficiency or as, uh, the, uh, the criticality of my data. Cool. So what are the N365 options that we are looking at today? Uh, basically, there are three things. One is the Power BI Content Pack, which is a, a great start, and you guys can start using it from the get-go. It comes with a standard template, and we'll look at more of that in some time. But this is a good start for anybody who wants to start using and looking at any kind of analytics. Then you have the Graph Activity API, which is kind of growing, and it has grown a lot. Uh, and at the end of the session, I will show you guys something a little bit of what I've been doing around it. But that has actually kind of bridged the gap of, you know, having the data available plus you getting it. And finally, this is the old way and, you know, the audit logs and control of, you know, audit tracking by Office 365. And we will see how we can effectively get the data out uh, in a format. And I will show you the data format, not the exact solution. I will show you some blocks that I've written about the solution if you can go and look at it, but effectively I will be talking through it mostly. And that's the custom bit, develop and building bit of it. Cool, to jump into Power BI content packs. The first thing about a content pack is it's something that you can install upfront. You don't have to go about building anything. 
you can just go to Power BI and I think they are calling it app source now. So basically you get that app source and you install that app and then it's ready to go. It is customizable so you can go and customize that report. You can actually you know, tweak it a little bit as you want. The data sources are available. The controls are available. You can change it and you can configure it as you want it. But it has its own boundaries that it work with. It has pre-built uh, you know, rules and uh, 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 the calculations, everything done. So what you are doing is working with those calculations. You can even go to the data and do your own, uh, you know, new calculations and new columns. But you know, you, you are then going into the realm of detailing the whole data set, and you need to have some knowledge. So you need a big analyst, somebody who can help you. So some of the points to note around it is, first of all, you have to activate Power BI. If you don't have one, you need a Power BI license or you have to have some power to power BI access. Then you need to install the content pack or the app source that I talked about, then share with the organization and users. So once you have built it, it's ready. You go ahead and share it with the organization as a whole or the users who are going to work with it. And uh, you get tenant admin. You need to have tenant admin privileges for the API. So the, the person who is installing the content pack or who is configuring the content pack needs to have access to grant uh, kind of access to the tenant. If that person doesn't have access, uh, the content cannot be read because it needs admin access privilege. So that's one key thing that uh, you know we need to know about. Cool. So let's do a quick look at what uh, it looks like. So this is this is the Microsoft 365 usage executive summary content pack, which uh, this is obviously sample data. So you guys can see you can you can actually go and install it by uh, going to your apps and then uh, so basically you go to your home and you can go and uh, wait that's free here uh, all. so you can go ahead and you can search for microsoft there you go that is there already here and you can go and click on it and you get it now and then basically when you get it now it will go and install it and then it will ask for you to configure it uh, in my case so in my case it's already installed so i'm not going to do that but it seems like uh, there is a new version to it or i can go ahead and install in a new workplace and i can set that workplace as you said I can create a new workspace. I'm going to install the app there so you can get it from app source. And once it is installed, I think my workspace is already selected. Yeah, I think it did. OK, anyways, uh, and then basically I can just so it is installing still. Uh, OK, so once I go there, it will ask me to connect the data. So first of all, I have to connect. Then I can explore, which I was showing you, and then I can share. So for connecting, you need to have your tenant ID, which you can get from your admins. And once you provide your tenant ID, you can actually go ahead and the next step is to configure it uh, with your parameters. And then so basically this, like the access level, that's where your admin access privilege will be needed. And once you configure it, it will be ready and it will start getting data from your tenant. Now the one that I have in front of me is the template data. That is like something that will give some real kind, real time information or real like information about how it will look like. And then basically once you install it, you can actually go and you know look at your tenant information. Uh, sometimes the tenants are not full of fledged and they don't have enough data, so it looks really bland, uh, bland and then you don't know what those fields are for. So I would normally recommend that you work with your sample data get all your tabs ready everything is ready and working then you switch to uh, your tenancy and connect with it so it can be uh, like at least you know what you are going to look at finally when it's there and it's not something uh, wrong with your code or something or wrong with your setup or something but it's something uh, that the data is not available so quickly uh, looking at the summary you guys get adoption uses mobility Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint, which are kind of main, the teams, uh, some some access and some 
like some percentage growth and everything. Then you get the next graph of the same thing in more detail and it gives you a more granular breakup also. So you can just see what growth has been in each month. You can look at different categories on the top. Uh, it's quite extensive, so I would say spend some time going through it so it can make sense and you guys can grasp it and before you start using it. And then once you have understanding of everything makes sense and this is obviously relevant and highly uh, you know, effective data, uh, but very cumulative. You cannot drill down through it, so you cannot go and click and see more details into it. And that's where I suppose the later part of my presentation where I saw the graph and um, you know, of uh, management API and uh, thing with my that can actually drill down more. You can see activation and licensing. You can look at product usage. And you can look at user activity. Now these all are very descriptive. I'm not going to spend too much time in it. It gives you all kind of information that you're looking for based on departments, based on country and all those. Uh, well, country if you are multi regional and these all can be customized based on your business requirements. Uh, so th this will give you some insight on what is available already there and you can start using it. So this is the Power BI content pack uh, that we talked about now going and sharing it. So let's go back to my other one. And then when you go on to share it and it is ready, you go to access. So you open the app, you go to access, then you assign the users and see if they're admin member or contributor or viewer. Each one will need a license to access uh, the, two, uh, the report and everything. So you need to have to be a license for that. Uh, and then uh, if you are going to use it on a site or something, you still need that access. And then once you assign that and then you share it, people can start using it. Uh, and they will get a link and they can. There is another way of uh, uh, getting it uh, deployed is through the specific users and that you can create a template out of it and those template app can be distributed or deployed to different locations. But again, it depends on really do you need it because if you customize it, yeah, getting a template out will really help because then you can just see if you need to have it as a backup or as as a future improvement or something like that. But uh, yeah, this is another option available or if you have different workspaces and once it's like different people have different views or different apps in one. Sense. Cool. Uh, the other thing is about the, the options that you get. You can do data flows. You can do uh, a page generated report. You can have a dashboard. So this one being a starting point, you can do multiple stuff on top of what the data is available for you. Uh, but again, as I was saying, start with your primary report. And once you have the primary report, you can go and customize it and improve it. Uh, to customize the report, it's very simple. You go to the app, you click on the report. And. Uh, let's see, edit here. OK, so this is the app that I was talking about where I was customizing it, but unfortunately I didn't spend enough time. Um, so obviously that thing is not complete. Uh, you guys can see I had a SharePoint tab and the data was so much that it took time for me to edit everything. Uh, for the demo preparations, but when you click edit, you get all the data groups here. You get all the reason activity, all the sets, and you can then go and work on your calculated columns or uh, what do they call it? I forgot. Uh, new forgot the name now. Uh, new measure, yes, new measure. So you can create measures in this and then you can work with measures as, as you are you know, creating more and more. So this all data is available. You can see the data set um, through here. Uh, on the down, it's nothing new. It just if you are working with Power BI, you pretty much know this stuff. So you just open it and you can look at the data set. You can create a new measure, put a new chart and then just start working and publish it. And that's it. Your uh, Power BI app is ready to be used again. Cool. Uh, and it, I think the data refresh is set um, 
think the data refers if I look at it, data refers to the data that do I think you can set it? I suppose it is. Sorry. I think it's per week or sorry per day or something like that. I think there is a data reference for that. I have I have not seen it for some time, so I'm <laughs> um, forgetting what it had. But anyways, so you can go and set the data refresh uh, based on a periodic fashion, and then you can actually refresh the data, or you can manually go and refresh the data set as you would normally do. Cool. So that is all about Power BI Content Pack. If you have some any questions, please feel free to put in the Q&A session, and I can answer them more on it. Cool. Now let's go to the next part or the more, as I say, more customizable or interesting part for me. Uh, but this is where you guys need to start thinking about a custom report, a custom build, and uh, do we need that? Do we need more details? Do we need to get more output out of my analytics? I want to know which users are doing something. What's happening in there? I can see the high level graph, but I don't know who are those users. What's happening with the upload file? How many people are doing it? So those all questions that content pack can answer some part of it, not not all, or you can go to the audit logs and research your own, but you are going to spend a lot of time. So that's where uh, the graph API can really help because that has endpoints coming in. You can read the data from graph and then you can publish it into a custom report and look at it. So to start with, the graph API support is a value through graph. You get can get cumulative numbers and the data uh, can be stored uh, uh, beyond six months. So basically uh, what it means is if you are actually getting your graph reports of collaboration or teams usage or uh, user for user licenses or something like that, that data will be available for later six uh, so for the, uh, the historically six months. So if you want to go and retrieve data beyond six months, then it is you need a custom data store on your end to store the data so you can retrieve the data after six months. And like you, if you want to build a report, uh, you know, retrospectively from uh, from the day that you start and you want to keep it for four, five years or one year or two years, then I suppose creating your own data store will be helpful because then you can get the data out of graph activity API, put into a data store which you can generate reports on. So this all needs custom effort. So you need to start planning around it. You need to start thinking about it. You need to start to worrying about how do I go about doing it. So key points to know in that is you need Azure AD app with graph permissions for it. So that's normally with every uh, graph uh, app, you need Azure AD app and you need to give permissions to the graph app to access it. You, you need to start thinking about delegated versus applications because the resources could be accessible by all users or it can be accessible only by admins. Like for example, if you are getting group level member access and checking who are the owners, then that cannot be done by normal user because they cannot read through all the groups or, or teams. That for that you need application level access which needs to have granted admin access so you can read the data out. So that kind of authentication uh, planning has to be done as part of this. There is API layer hosting required for data pool. So how it works is you get a graph endpoint that you can call. You need to have a custom solution on your end which will read the graph data and then it can be stored onto Azure table or uh, something like a SQL database as I was saying so that you can. If you are thinking that the data is not that going to be old, you can do a direct call through graph and get the data on the fly. But then you have to worry about the data size and how much data you are getting and how you are going to manage and spread the data out. The other key thing around it is the schema. The, 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 the signature of the data that you are getting is kind of different for every data that, that you are fetching. So it could have some values in one and not any values in other. So I will show you some examples now, but you might need to cater for that in your custom build so that you know what you're trying to get and how you can use it. So what the type of activities have, and actually this thing has grown. I've not updated it for some time now. There are more things available. Uh, and you can look at the graph uh, documentation for that. But 
at the time I did it about a month or a couple of months ago, there were team devices and users available. So you can get uh, the team devices and the users who are accessing teams. You can get Outlook app, mailbox and Outlook activity. So you can see how is the Outlook getting used, the mailbox sizes, the mailbox uh, parameters and then activity in it. You can look for Office 365 groups, users and activations like what are the groups that have been used? what users are available, what activations has been done. You can look at OneDrive and SharePoint uses. Uh, so you can look at how, what OneDrive has been used, SharePoint sites. You can look at activity on SharePoint sites, but at a very cumulative level, it doesn't go into the details. And we look at the detail one in the other at Office 365 management API. This is very high level. Uh, and then we get the Skype for business device user and participant. Uh, and the Yammer activity. So these are all the different categories that you can fill the data out from graph, but that is not that detailed. That is very high level cumulative numbers, and you can just go and use that data for creating some kind of uh, insight into a little bit more detail than the content pack of what's happening with your tenancy. Cool. So let's look at the activity API and the uh, content of it. So this is an example content um, example of the content that I got from uh, one of the reports that I ran a couple of months ago. I get the content sources. I get the operation. I can, uh, so the operations are very detailed. I've distributed them and given the, my custom names to it. And then I can go and check like, what is the content for OneDrive? So OneDrive file count, 38.3% user counts. So these are, this obviously doesn't make sense in its own, and I have not categorized the report as a sense that you would use it in a normal uh, activity report or kind of thing, just to give you guys a feel of what activities are available so you can go and look for those activities. Um, the, the, the reports can be customizable, the reports can be customized and created, you know, more like the ones that you saw in Power BI content pack, a more detailed one. Uh, because the data is available, but you need to spend that time and create that. So for SharePoint, if I look uh, the SharePoint one, I get activity file counts, I get the pages hits, I get the user counts, I get the user details. Uh, same thing for teams, I get the team use device user detail, team user counts, team user activity counts. This is very high level. Obviously, it doesn't give a insight in this view of what the data is about. So let's look at some of the data that we are getting. So if I look at this, I can go and filter based on my there you go, product. So I can just say, give me teams. Okay, so you guys can see, okay. So remember, recall if I was uh, saying that you get a lot of discrete schemas. So you guys can see a lot of empty columns. That's because I'm combining all the schemas together. There are schemas from team user detail, which gives me the user information. Uh, when was the last activity? What licenses are assigned to them? What, uh, sorry, this one is, what else I have? Uh, that's all. Then we have the user detail, which gives me what, which devices that they use uh, the teams on. So you can see some, uh, most of them are no, because it's obviously a, <laughs> Uh, template or a, uh, one is a demo tenancy, but you can see uh, people have I've used it on Windows and I've used it on web. Uh, and I can see oh, there is more. So for the user detail one, we, we could get the call counts. We could get the meeting counts. We could get how many private messages have done, how many chat messages they have done. And same thing with the user detail. The user detail, I can get the devices. And I can get what else? I can get uh, if the content is deleted or not. Yeah, and then also I can get with the user counts, I can get actually with this one, I can get number of calls they have made, number of meetings. So as you guys can see, the different activities have different set of data. Each one activity will not make a sense in its own. So you have to get all the different kind of activities. For example, the the case could be like, I want to know how many users have been using phones app versus the web versus the desktop. So you need to get the user details. Then you need to get the user counts, combine the two data, and then you need to create a report out of it. 
So what the graph will give you is cumulative data based on different uh, schema points. Like for example, this one is uh, activity counts, which says number of uh, actions, number of private chat messages, number of uh, content calls. Some of this data is obviously empty because it is a demo tenant that I'm working on. But if it's a real tenant, I can I have seen data coming up like 100, 200, 400 and quite interesting to see the data because you didn't know if people are using the Teams app more or the desktop more or people are logging through the web because they are on the run and they're not using their phone. So this one gives an insight about how the team is using the, uh, the Office 365 applications that you have rolled out. I was in one of the cases was surprised that they have rolled out Outlook for a month and then there was no traction for a month. We all think what like Outlook is primary, right? And people should be using Outlook, but it seemed like because it was a volunteer organization, not many people have gone and enabled it. So it gave us an on point. Oh, you know what? We need to do more comms. We need to get more, you know, kind of training available. And that really helped to fast track that adoption. But without this analytic data, you'd be sitting and thinking that, hey, somebody is using it. Uh, I don't know who, but you know, seems like it's working but apparently nobody is. So this kind of information will really help. Obviously you have to churn the data. So as I was saying earlier, you need analysts and you need a dev in some sense because somebody needs to understand the technicality of getting the graph data out and putting into a you know, data set or something that can be analyzed into a report. So cool, so as you guys can see, there are different schema points. There are different reports that you can generate with graph. Uh, you need to have a graph endpoint, an application to read the data, and somewhere to store the data, which can very well be a Power BI source, Excel, or it could be a Azure table, or it could be a SQL. This data will not grow too much big, so you, you are fine to store it at in a small location somewhere. But when we talk about activity management API, which throws about 25,000 records in a day, you may not be able to use an Excel or something like that. So in that case, better to use a consistent database to store the data. Cool. Um, so the reports are very planned, but I hope you guys can get the idea that you know these are all the activities that you're looking at. So you can get those activities out, store it somewhere, and then basically it is up to your requirement and judgment of what you are going to use it for. So let's jump on to the next bit, which is management API. Now we have looked at graph. We looked at Power BI Content Pack. Power BI Content Pack within the first level, where you get a customized well pre-built report, and then you can go and customize it by changing the data set, create new measures, using DAS formulas, using transform data. You go and customize that data set and you start building what you are looking for. Now, I'm not going into detail of how you do it because uh, this is something yeah, since you, you guys can figure it out, but it's out of scope of this session. Uh, but provided you have that knowledge, you can go and work with the data sets and you can build those reports. After that, you are talking about graph, which is the next level up where you get cumulative data out. As you guys can see in the data sets that I showed you, there is not user. There is some user names which talks about license and who has been assigned and who has been activated, but doesn't give you every day activity. It doesn't you give you the detail level file uploads. It doesn't give detail level of chat messages that people have been doing. It, it doesn't flag you stuff that people have been doing that are wrong. So that's where Office Management API comes in picture. Now this is a kind of a very hard audit tracking system, which I suppose a lot of people you a lot of uh, a lot of users know from the Office 365 audit logs, which you guys might be using in security and compliance center and going and searching the data there. Office 365 management API gives you a code endpoint to that. They can go ahead and fetch the data out from those systems and store it. Now, if the fetching process is obviously, uh, it is a little bit tedious and it takes time. And that's where I was saying that I have a blog that talks about it. I refer to that blog at the end of the session. And you guys can go and look into it. But this is hardcore development. You need somebody who understands development critically, who can build as a solution to effective requirement for you guys, can do that structuring and planning around it, and actually 
make the data available in periodic format because as I was saying for a roughly a 400 500 user group. Uh, just as an example, you might be getting about 20 to 25,000 hits in a day. So that much data, if you have to compile and store, you need to have some kind of data structure, planning, data modeling, and all those stuff done on your end to plan for it. So the key things are, it gives you a detailed activity support, so you can go and look at data in its more granular fashion, go and work with the data and create something really you know, granular and detailed and fancy. It gives you in-depth reporting, so you can go and look for like, okay, what activity happened in that period? Who and go on and shared a file with some external user? Who was actually given access beyond what they were given or what they were asking for? Who was actually sharing a file with someone? Who was actually file uploading? Uh, you can go and see who added members, which teams were created. So all those kind of answers you can go and granularly look at. It gives you a very good insight on how the growth has been within your organization at its core level. So for example, if I want to know a team uh, which has been rolled out teams, so you, if you guys are going through the rollout phase of Office 365 or teams, you might have that question that, okay, I have released, and if hopefully you are doing phase deployment, you might have released to one team like people in culture or HR, and then the other team is finance, and the other team is corporate. And because you are doing in phases, you would love to know what the finance, are they using the team or not? Is it really helpful to them? The same thing with HR and same thing with corporate, but because these guys are busy with their own things, it's not always easy to get and find a session with them and talk through that. This kind of analytics will give you uh, data upfront. So you can go and look at it. Oh, HR is not been using. Let's set a proactive session with them. Go and find out what the challenges are and then resolve them. So that gives you a heads up start on understanding what needs to be done. And you can see that, oh yeah, they are using the file sharing a lot, but not file, uh, uh, well, file upload a lot, but not file sharing. So maybe they need a training on sharing and see how to share files, not just upload and keep it as a repository. So those are the things that this activity API can actually help in getting the data insight into. And then as I was saying, you need a custom data store for it. So you need to have the data somewhere stored. The data will grow very fast. And so as a table is something that I normally recommend for this because they are low cost. You cannot do much hard fast queries, but they are very low cost. So you can just go ahead and and they are easily connectable to Power BI. So you can go ahead and span it. Uh, I think few of the projects I have done, they've gone in six months beyond two terabytes of data, but still not costing them too much. Uh, because of you know the, you have to plan it properly though you need to know ask someone who knows how to plan it uh, there are three few requirements that you have to meet for Azure tables and how you can store data in NoSQL databases but once you've got that figured out everything else is smooth so you can just go ahead get the schema because it NoSQL so you you can actually define the schema very easily you can uh, you know expand it or contract it as per your data source put it in different what I would do recommend is for each audit source, because everything is different in management API, SharePoint gets a different audit source. Uh, uh, Active Directory gets a different audit source. Exchange gets a different audit source. And because the schemas are different, I would normally recommend to have different Azure tables for each audit source. So you can get the data and plan for the data for that source. So it becomes very easy. So you need to do some data scaling. You need to do some data modeling to plan for that activity and how you can manage. Cool, I suppose I have talked about a lot of this as I was speaking through it, but these are the steps that we will normally go through. So first of all, you need to have audit log on your Office 365, which means that you need to turn it on in Security and Compliance Center, and my blog talks about it. If you have not done it, you may not get data out. And you might be like, OK, I've, I've done all this test. Why am I not getting any data? Because the audit log is not turned on. Then you need to go and subscribe those logs. Once you have audit log turned on, the data is available in Office 365. But to read the data on your backend, you need to have a subscription available from Office 365 that, hey, I want to go and read that data. So you need to subscribe to that. Then you need to run some periodic jobs. As I was saying, that the data is very heavy. So you need to run some jobs. I would normally say periodic. There is a webhook extension of it, but I saw that webhook were hitting very fast. So 
I thought jobs are better for me. So you can do some periodic jobs to store the data as you are reading through them, probably in our slot. And then you need the tenant admin privilege to grant access to those APIs. So as in Graph, this one also uses an Azure AD app and you get access to Office 365 Manage API through it. So to do that, you need to have tenant admin privileges to go and admin uh, consent those API endpoints. So if you don't have access to a tenant admin privilege, you cannot go and authenticate them, so you cannot use it. So you need those things to start with your, uh, or these steps to be done so that you can start with your Office 365 management API. So all good. Now, these are the different logs that are available. Um, I don't see much changes happening here because everything is going to graph. So these are the different logs that are available in there. One is Azure Active Directory, which is kind of detailed to go the sign in, the directory audits and everything. The graph is also coming with that and I can show you a quick demo on something that I've been working on. SharePoint and project online activities. So SharePoint activities, and I'll show you the detailed activities that you can get, but you can get SharePoint, file upload, file access, file shared, uh, and a lot of things. Right? There are, there's a bunch of uh, activities that you can look at. And more details in my blog, I will not be covering in this session, but you can go through my blog to get those details. SharePoint project online activities, exchange admin and mailboxes. So exchange admin activities and mailbox activities. You can get data loss protection and security and compliance center activities. You can get Teams, Power BI, and Form activities, and the Yammer activities. So these are all the different tools and sorry, as a, as they call it, audit sources available for you guys to get access. How they group the audit sources is quite tricky. They get an audit for uh, audit source files already, which is separate. They get an audit source for SharePoint and Project Online, which is separate. Let's get an audit source for exchange, which is separate. And these all fall in one called audit.general. So you might be like, wait one second. If I want just teams, can I just get teams? Yes, you can. But what you have to do is query a source, which is audit.general, and then filter out teams activities from it. So you got to have to, you have to go granular level. So you get the data out and then you filter it. How do you do all that? Again, it's available in my blog. It's very technical. You need dev support. You need somebody who can know the data, how to plan the data and everything. And once we have the data, it's sweet. So you can do all of that. I, just, I don't have a proper report that I will show you to you guys today uh, because uh, you know the, the essence of the reporting takes time and I didn't, don't have to, you know, time to spend on creating those reports, but I'll show you a quick set of the data, uh, data model and the data schema so you guys can pick, start picturing the activities that you can get, but yeah, it's the, the reports and those all things can be spinned up by analysts or somebody like that. So cool, so let's, uh, yeah, so we will, before we go into the next part, let's look into the reports. Cool. So this is an example schema of an exchange output from audit Office 365 management API. And as you guys can see, you have uh, the client string, the client IP address, the creation, who was the mailbox, they access their email, their organization name. There's actually more to it. I'm not, I think I'm not storing it, but you can get all sort of information similar to what you see in audit log. So this is the raw data set for an exchange uh, audit log tracking. And we'll look at the SharePoint log, which is a little bit more, and uh, there's more activities to it. So if I come to SharePoint logs, these are all the operations that I can get. Well, there are more operations that are, sorry. There are actually about 50 or 60 operations that you can get, but since there are so many operations, the data sets become so heavy. So what I have done is I have filtered them out into a specific set of operations which mostly a lot of people have questions on sharing and everything and file upload and file usage. So I've gotten those activities out for my tenant and put it here so I can demo it. So these are all the operations that you can actually track on. So you have file accessed, file checked in, file checked out, file modified, file previewed, file uploaded, list item created, page fresh, page viewed. Now what does it mean? 
it doesn't mean a lot of things. Combining those together may make some sense. So for example, if file has been used or not, so file accessed, file checked in and checked out. These three combined can give you like how many files are used. File upload, how many files are actually you, uh, uploaded new into the system? So you can go and check the file upload to see if there's a growth happening in that team or people just report. Uh, but uh, like if you've done a migration project and you have done all the data in there, people may not be using it at all. So the data is there, but people are there. And how do you know that? You can go and look at the file upload activity and see if people are uploading regularly or not. If not, then maybe people are not using it effectively. Or if, but if you see the file access activity are still going high, then you know that, okay, people are using the existing data, but maybe they need some training on how to upload new files. Same thing with page. So if you had an intranet kind of scenario and you know a lot of people have intranets, you don't know if, if people are actually going and looking at it, people are doing it or not. So this activity will help. So you can go and check the page view activity and see if people are actually using uh, the page views or not, or they're going and finding the files in intranet, or they're still looking for emails to get to the data. And then finally searches. So if you are really interested on in if people are finding the right data or not, and Sometimes it actually helps in finding out misfits in that like people are searching for maybe Google stuff. And so hmm, you know, that that that's something Microsoft search is bringing maybe. But you can do all of that search kind of query performed and check. OK, what kind of queries are there? Which users are looking for what? So you can get some kind of intelligent insights on how searches are happening in your organization. So cool. And as you guys can see in 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 this, I have got per user grouping, so I can see RCP or obviously is my admin is using it a lot. He has done one sixty-two point eight seven operations in whatever one two weeks. I've got this data, whereas the other uh, dummy user Megan has been doing thirty percent. So mostly, uh, Ashish has been using a lot. Megan has been next, and then finally, app at a share one, which I suppose is a custom app that I built and that is used for some of the testing that I'm doing. So that is 15, 6.73% uh, of the use. So as this is really good insight for me that I can see, okay, how many users are actually using it? Or is it like four of the content authors? They are making most of it and none of the other users are looking even at, looking at even the data, right? So this is kind of a good view of how operations are performed by different users. Then I can look at, what are the most of the important sites that people are looking at? So I can go and check, oh, these are the data that people are looking at, fine. So I know that which are the sites. And then I can look at what kind of operations for each site. Now I have not taken out the site URL, these are site quits, but I can take the site URL out and I can see which sites have the largest operations, which sites are performing well. And then we can look at the devices. So what devices are people using at all? OneDrive, Office Word, since like browser has been the most in my testing. So this is how I can go and see how people are using the different uh, applications and different tools and what's the growth, what access people have been doing. This is kind of great data when I want to check what's happening, what people are doing it or not, success stories, pain points, and even in some cases governance. So if people are sharing files externally, I want to know who they are sharing with, what's the permissions that they're sharing with and everything. This all data can be valuable for me to work with. But again, as I was saying earlier, this needs a lot of dev effort, needs a lot of planning, and you need to be prepared for storing a lot of data. Cool. Now we have looked at most of the custom build and applications. Now I don't know how many of you guys are available to do this kind of stuff. I've got, I've got questions from, la, uh, from last uh, year when I have been doing this sessions and talks and everything. I've got a lot of people reaching out to me like, this is so hard, how do I go up building? The blocks have helped a lot, but not necessarily everyone. So is there a faster way of getting this? Is there a way where I can go ahead and help you guys getting what you guys need without a lot of the dev thing that I have to dump? Like I've been talking to people from last year and there were people reaching out from UK, from US, from Australia, where I'm from, from Southeast Asia, from Latin America. So those people have been reaching out, hey, I've read your blog, this is science. This is something that we want. How do you go ever set it? Now I have been not been available to everyone to help everyone, uh, but there is a lot of work needed. So if you want to get unverifiable productivity in unprecedented levels, 
you might have to spend some time on your own. So how do I help uh, you guys in building something like that? So this is where I have been spending some time recently where I'm trying on a SaaS. I'm working on a SaaS solution. Now the vision of the SaaS solution is not to build an analytics tool, but it is actually get help in getting the data out, look at the data, and you can actually walk through the data very fast. You can easily analyze the audit data. I'm going to build some API endpoints so that you guys don't have to write the code. They can, you can just call something and you can get the data out of it. I, I do all the heavy loading, uh, heavy lifting, and you guys can just directly start using the data. You can create alert and reminders on my site, so you can go ahead and set alerts. Okay, I want to know when somebody is sharing, and I want to know activities per week or per day or, or per month. So that those all can be done. And one of my other interests is AI. So I've been trying to make some smart analysis, and that's where I think my tool will really help, is smart analyze the data. So you can just say, show me all the uh, risk sharing in last three months. So the AI engine will go and analyze it, and it will bring the data out. Now, obviously, this all things are not there in my system right now because I'm still working through it in my own time. So it takes time to build. Uh, and then ultimately, I want to give you guys a view adoption of and the growth of the Office 365 for your tenancy. So you can go and start looking at it. Cool, and there are some things coming out, but before further ado, let's look at the solution that I've been working on. So this is the uh, test uh, uh, deployments have been going a little bit haywire, so I've not deployed it yet. But the test, so basically what you do is you come and log in, and this is going to be free uh, for at least six months or so, and uh, people will fund to freely use it. I have not thought about how to license it or anything like that right now. This is mostly me trying to give something out to the community and the businesses out there who want to really use this information. And this will be really available for you guys, mostly by October or November uh, this year, and then you guys can go and start so, uh, looking at the data at least. For API endpoint, I have to see because that's something I have to pay for uh, hosting it. So maybe I have to do some subscription so I can get something to pay for that maintenance and everything. But saying that, at least it will give you guys a quick overview of what you guys want to use. So let's get onto it. Again, I've not done a lot. What I've done though is I've done the graph integration and I've got some uh, some inputs from uh, you know, the uh, sign ins and directory audits, which is kind of cool. It's actually really interesting for me to look at when I do this and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know that. Uh, so so it goes and it takes your tenant account so you can log it from your tenancy. Um, you have to grant access to the app though, but once you grant access to the app, it will go and get the data out. It will give you identity events. It will give you security events and it will give you collaboration events. For now, I've just a user identity, which is sign ins and directory audits. So what are those two activities? So if I go to user identity, it will give me all the sign-ins that have been done from different sources in my tenancy. And this is coming from graph. The graph data set is really huge. I've done a lot of filtering in it. Um, so if I show you guys a little bit, um, this is the graph output. And if I go and look at sign-ins, so I'll list sign-ins. This is like massive. And I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, I don't know how somebody will try to make sense out of it unless he's really, you know, kind of an analyst. So what I did is I did some business logic, did filter out and try to show the data that is really, and you guys might say, no, I want more data out of it. So uh, there will be API endpoint available so you can get the whole data set in a more kind of a filtered and managed way, not just the whole thing because you can keep on growing. I got a thousand hits already in last month or so, I think. So you guys may be in front of 5,000. So if you look at 25,000 sign-ins, what am I looking at? So the idea is to get, get the richness out of the data. So this is something, and then you will get directory audits in this case, which is mostly about, now this is really critical for any business because you want to look at who is adding users, who is updating a group. Um, you know, somebody is uh, consulting an application. Is somebody is removing now? Obviously, this these things I'm going to make more business specific and group them together. So, yeah, what a delegated permission grant means is an app is asking for permissions to like if you install my app, it will ask for permission to a particular API endpoint, and somebody is granting it. So you can say that somebody has asked access to SharePoint groups. 
for example. So those all things. And then you have Intune because I'm trying to do some security stuff. So there is a service installer update happening. I went ahead and changed my company name. I considered an application. I added a role assignment to a uh, user. I gave them an additional role that they didn't have. So those all things kind of something that you will miss because that's just happening so much in your organization. And the schemas are quite different. You guys can see some empty endpoints. Why? Because the schemas are different. So sometimes I get users, sometimes I get app. And if I just look at that raw data set, that doesn't help me a lot. So my whole objective of building this is so that I can get the richness out of the data and then instead of you going and filtering the data and you spending time of word, you can just get the extracted data. out. So some of the facilities that will be readily available is export to CSV. I'm working on this right now, so you can just export this data into CSV. You can just say what roles you want. You can do smart analysis of data, so you can just say, hey, smart analyze my data, gave me extracted report. Now I know I want to think about what that extracted report will look like and that what AI because AI as such, even though it's very easy to build, it's still costly. So I have to think about and this is something and I'm juggling about how do I manage the cost? Uh, but I think AI will really help because it will just tell you, OK, give me all the risk levels like sign in. Currently, I was just looking through the data and I wanted all the risks, but I could not find any risk level, none because I, there has been obviously no hacks to my environment, but in your case, if somebody has hacked and one of the clients I was looking the other day, somebody had accessed their site from Nigeria and the guy was glad they have MFA and all those stuff. So uh, they are safe because obviously we do the security for them. But if somebody is not looking at it, they will not know it and they will not know. It. But Microsoft flags those details. So it's a risk level is high. Uh, even though my city is, I don't know why I risk and will, but anyways, maybe a data center or data router there. So. So the risk level is a critical thing, but you cannot know that, but my smart analysis of data will try to get it out. Then you have alert notifications, so you can get alerts of everything that is happening. So you can say, I'm thinking of this being a very quick alert, like you can set an alert saying that, hey, give me a weekly report of this kind of information. Send me an alert on that. So you can go and click on that alert. It will generate a report for you when you want it. Now this is all going to be expense of your resources. If I have to spend resources on creating all this thing, I might have to think about how I manage it. And then finally, and the foremost is search. So everybody wants to search the data, right? So you need to have some endpoint for you guys to search on it. So um, this is, I think, a basic ask. So I will provide it, but I have to see what kind of searches I want to give out because the searches could be anything. So I'm thinking of either I'm matching the AI search into the search and then combining it. So that's all possible. So cool. So this is kind of uh, its first snapshot and what I call as the Collab Analytics tools SaaS solution. You can guys can go ahead and find it on my blog, which I will show the links. There is a Collab Analytics tab on the top. You can go here. It tells a little bit about what it can do. Um, you can get in touch with me. You can click if you are interested in signing up for this. So either you guys can submit the forms that uh, uh, Nadi had posted in the Q&A. So there is a form and there is some interest. It gives me some insight. You can uh, provide your details there and I will reach out to you in October and I have something ready as a beta and you guys can test it. No obligations in there. Uh, or you can click on the get in touch uh, form which will give you a contact page and you can just write your name, email and if you are interested in beta. If you are not interested, leave it blank. I'm not going to contact you, but once I have a proper product go, I will try to reach you out and tell you. You guys can also reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn, just to even if you want to share thoughts, you want to share your problems, you want to reach out and find some suggestions, happy to help. Uh, and any ideas that you guys think this tool can help you, that also will be really you know, helpful information for me. Cool, so that uh, that link is also available on the slide deck, I think. Oops, sorry. Uh, this information, I don't know if I put it in slide but I think I put the my um, my blog link, so ashishpari.com, and then you can go into the top and click. I've also popped the direct links to Ashish's blog and also the direct link to the um, Collab Analytics link as well in the Q&A if anyone's looking for it. 
Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Nadia. And I have in the presentation, so. <laughs> OK, thanks, Nadia. Uh, so what is upcoming? Export to CSV, smart analysis of data, intelligent search, alert and notifications, security and collaboration. Security and collaboration, I'm building on it because Teams and SharePoint and OneDrive, there's just so much data to compile. So I'm just working towards it and see how I can bring the data out and the richness actually out of it, not just num lines of rows of data. Cool, so these are the helpful information from my session. So usage analytics, graph API, management API, and configuration block. This is this is the link to the blocks which I was talking about where you can go and look at all the configuration steps you have to do, uh, how you can set it up, how you can manage it. All those stuff is in there. Uh, there are obviously you know things that you might be thinking about. So I have subscriptions, how to set up a subscription. I have a blog for how to build it. Uh, and there is a GitHub repo also here for you guys if you want to just go and look at the code. Not in this one, I think, not in the next one. Uh, so this is the PNP PowerShell way of doing it. And this one is the GitHub repo, which is as a function. So you can go and look at the GitHub repo and get started on the code if you would like to just use it. Uh, but again, you need to set up the subscription and everything on your end so you can start doing that yourself. There is a little bit of code here, a little bit of understanding of the code. Uh, that's pretty much I can help with. If there is more help required, send me a blog and I'll include it in my tool. Um, if you are doing it yourself, I'm happy to answer any questions related to how to use Apple audit log storage, PowerShell, C Sharp, all those stuff. I'm pretty much coded in C Sharp, but there are other application languages that you can code it also. It's just an API endpoint call. So basically, all that business logic can be written in any other language. Cool, so I suppose that's all from me today. Uh, these are the, the, so I have put up the page, yes. Uh, so I have put the Collab Analytics page here. There is my blog, that's my LinkedIn, and that's my Twitter handle. Um, it was great talking to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, we can answer it. Um, the Q&A right now, but yeah. Cool. That's all from me today, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to post it, and I can start answering them. Okay. So Nadia, do you want to take it and then I answer, come back to it, or do you want to continue? Maybe answer them? Sure, we can answer them now. Um, so there's one from Janelle that says, can you add other data sets into this space? So for example, bringing in building swipe data. Uh, I suppose that means into uh, the reports uh, in the Power BI, maybe not be. Uh, well, you can because you, you have the data set, you can combine those data sets that you want, but I do not see a relationship of how that Office 365 data set will help in the building uh, swipe data into it. Um, if there is a business case, yes, you can build that. If it is graph and activity API, yes, that's all possible. So this is, uh, yeah, this is possible. But as long as as you can connect the data together that can be built in and because it's just data sets you can combine them how can i connect power power bi to react js i would not say you would connect a power bi report to react js you would actually embed them so basically what you are going to do is get the power bi extract create a power bi there is a power bi report url share the workspace with everyone and then embed it you are not going to interact with it because power bi is a visual so what you are going to take is get the report and embed it so basically embed the report. If you want the data, then you will just basically use the graph or management API or the API endpoint that will I will open up and you get that in React.js and then show the data. So basically embed. Can you show the tables you bought from graph to formal your model? So yeah, I showed the tables, some of the tables, well, the tables are like, this is kind of JSON objects. So the table is what you make out of it. So I have put everything all together. So as you guys can saw, uh, as you, you might, if you might have seen that, how they are all layered out into different data sets and columns. So you might have to do a better ER diagram, like entity relationship diagram if you are doing a, uh, RDBMS system or NoSQL, you have to do some queries for it. But
but that depends on how you want to fetch the data. So yeah, it depends on. Cool. Um, so that's all from Nadia. So that's good. Uh, hopefully, I've answered most of your questions. If you have few more questions, please connect to me on LinkedIn or Twitter or uh, uh, any other means that you <laughs> would like to reach me. Thank you. Over to you, Nadia. Thanks, Ashish. Hi, everyone. Um, I thought I'd just give you a quick update on a couple of events we do have up and coming for the reactor in Sydney. If you do want to see what we do have an RSVP, you can join us at meetup.com slash Microsoft Reactor Sydney. You can also follow us on Twitter um, and to see the recordings of a lot of the other sessions that we have done, you can follow us on our YouTube channel as well. If you are interested in the Microsoft Reactor or keen to get involved and want to partake in one of our live streams, you can email us at reactorsid at microsoft.com and one of us will be in touch with you. Um, I've also popped the survey link as well into the Q&A just to give us some feedback on the session or let us know what you want to see so we can help tailor our workshops to you. Um, if you can enter the event code 11735, it just lets us know that you were talking about this particular workshop. So we have a couple of upcoming events this week. We have one coming um, this Thursday called Intro to Microsoft Learn and how to prepare for certifications with an expert. So this is gonna be a Microsoft Learn one-on-one -on -one session with Lisa Crosby, who is a Microsoft MVP. She's gonna take you through how to set up um, how to set up an account, what you can do with Microsoft Learn, where you can find the right presentations and documentations to help you prepare for the Microsoft exams that we do have to help you get certified. We then have another session called Tokenize All Things with Azure Blockchain. So this talk is going to give an overview of blockchain tokens, smart contracts, EIPs, and how you can get started in minutes on Azure. We have another session next week as well, if you're not familiar with Azure, and to, um, which is Intro to Azure DevOps. So DevOps brings together people, processes, and tech. So using Azure DevOps, you can deploy and deliver infrastructure and software more reliably, um, and this session is going to show you how. Um, so I don't see any more questions that have come through. So I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Thank you, Ashish, for coming on um, again and taking us through your project that you've you've come up with and giving some insights on how we can build and reach dashboards. So thank you to everyone who joined. Thank you again, Ashish, and we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.